You are listening to the Push Media Podcast Network. This is good shit. I can ride with my baby. I'd be in the kitchen cooking pies with my baby. Yeah. I get fly with my baby. I just left the mall. I'm getting five years minimum for conspiracy drug charges, 1748. Now that was my impression of Fetty Wap because I can't really convey to you how convincingly I was able to pull off his one eye. I have a very good physical impression of Fetty Wap. It's also very similar to my Forrest Whitaker, which I'm doing right now. I also advise you, if you ever find yourself in a situation where you're worried that a fight might break out, if you want to disarm and disorient whoever your opponent may be in this hypothetical situation, in order to instill fear in this person, what you do is you hit him with the Forrest Whitaker eye. You go real, real pensive and just non-concerned with the one eye. You have one eye so unconcerned, it's essentially a cat. They don't give a shit about the situation. You got one eye looking off to the northwest. You got the other eye penetrating your opponent's soul. That's what my advice to you would be if you find yourself in a fight that you don't want to have. You go Forrest Whitaker eye. Now, my Forrest Whitaker Whitaker physical impression is identical to identical to my Fetty Wap impression. And I didn't want to do a Fetty Wap voice because I don't think I could have been able to pull it off. And I push boundaries in terms of really bad impressions that by accident teeter into something controversial that I didn't really mean to say. Sorry. Case in point, Fetty Wap. Because to me, personally, I think the guy just sounds like a Caribbean deaf person. Wagwan! You know, maybe, eh, maybe that was too much. I found that funny, and if you were offended and you're deaf, you didn't hear it. The beauty of disability and making fun of people with them, as long as it's <laughs> within the bounds of good taste. I don't mean to, you know, punch down when, I, when I'm picking on Fetty Wap, who's facing five years for conspiracy drug charges, whatever that means. I'm surprised they didn't at some point find lyrics in some song to throw him away for the rest of his life. Conspiracy drug charges, and keep in mind, not a lawyer. What does that mean? You mean to tell me Fetty Wap was just hoarding uh, hoarding drugs and considering weighing his decisions as to whether to take them or not? Or was he moving them, and was he he like, or, you know, uh, possession and intent to distribute? You know, there's other words associated with drug charges. Conspiracy drug charges, were were the drugs there or not? Maybe it was a large, large shipment of contraband, smuggled, experimental, straight from some Chinese lab that's working on the next antidote to the thing that will be the next problem. Maybe Fetty Wap actually had an illegal contraband mass amount of eye drops, experimental eye drops that were maybe going to return his left cornea to whoever is talking to you, to him, so he could look you in the eyes at the same time. I don't, you know, I feel bad for Fetty Wap. It's kind of rough. But also, like, what did you expect someone who had three hit songs eight years ago to be doing right now? I'm pretty sure Fetty Wap lived in, like, Secaucus or West Orange, somewhere truly awful in terms of New Jersey, not just, you know, a state of living and conditions that you should accept as a human being and culture. It was the bottom of the barrel for New Jersey. And I don't mean to shit on New Jersey all that much. I actually have a very personal connection to the state of New Jersey. I went to college in New Jersey. I slept in that state probably more than any other state besides the one I was born in. That being said, New Jersey is pretty dumb, but it is interesting. But something that I always found weird about the state of New Jersey and any rapper who comes from it, they have... They're not one-hit wonders, but they maybe have three hits, and then you realize five years later... How else have they been subsidizing their lifestyle? They were obviously somehow thinking about or actually doing drugs in some way. 
But the thing about New Jersey that I always found weird, and this applies to any New Jersey rapper or anyone who literally lives there, people in New Jersey are always trying to sell you on how wonderful New Jersey is by saying, hey, man, we are so close to Philadelphia. We are so close to the shore. Head down to the beach. We are so close to New York City. You hop on a train, you're in the Big Apple. If the way you pitch how good your place is is by how close it is to better places, you live in a shitty place. That would be my assessment in total. So best of luck to Fetty Wap. I hope you get to see Young Thug at some point in the next 20 years, and I hope both of you are familiar with the rules of backgammon or baccarat or cribbage or other popular card games, perhaps spades, played in prison. I wouldn't know because I don't have to spend the next five years there. 17 for it. It, you know, there's no good way to do a Fetty Wap impression, in my opinion at least, without just sounding like you're mocking the deaf community, which is not something I want to do. I mean, God forbid a deaf person were to overhear me making a slightly off-color joke. And thankfully, he did. Now that, dare I say, an excellent joke, perhaps a perfect joke, a real thinker. And I look forward to the moment you get to experience that one. Um, so as you know, if you listen to the show, I am a fool. I am a, a moron, an ignoramus, a nincompoop. My password to many accounts is password of some variation or the word lunchbox. Sometimes I am pretty much an imbecile, but I read a lot and I bet you I've probably become more familiar with the events in the world in the last 24 hours than you have. That being said, if you are listening to me recount them to you, you take them with a grain of salt. And I've decided that a lot of the episodes as of late have been doing very well. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank anyone who's listened and told your friends about them. And I'd like to thank all of your mothers for really not having any personal limits in the bedroom. Sexually is what I am hinting at. But the most recent episodes were very, um, you know, the sky is falling, very calamitous. Because usually, and this is what sells, apparently, uh, pandemics, uh, leaks, monkeys, uh, viruses, civil wars, regular wars, and traditional wars. Staged wars, crack pipes, and uh, collusion. Um, insurrections, st stealing classified documents. You know, very serious shit has been what's going on as of late. So I've decided to very gleefully, ignorantly, um, take a page out of most of your books and put my head thoroughly into the sand. Because I need a break, to be quite honest with you. Because the most recent bit of real news that's actually tangible, apart from Joe Biden claiming all of a sudden today, congratulations, student loans are forgiven. But by the way, in terms of taxes it's actually seen any forgiveness that you qualify and take is seen as income and then you are responsible for paying a tax on so congratulations you're still getting fucked i'm still the guy who created and pushed the largest privately owned prison bill that has locked up minorities disproportionately but i'm almost dead so haha <laughs> fooled you will you shut up man or the other more serious bit of real tangible news before we all get to bury our heads in the sand is that Apparently, someone very close to Vladimir Putin, which probably is a, and by that, the, the, really not a close friend. I would imagine more just someone familiar with him as a person, and Vladimir holds at gunpoint to share personal details about his life. But someone close to Vladimir Putin, if that's possible, um, had their daughter uh, killed by the Ukrainian Secret Service. And apparently Putin has taken that to heart if he had one. And he is all upset. And to me, and to be clear, I at first thought, is this even real? Is this just something Putin's putting out there as a PR effort to just, you know, justify the fact he's about to put more people on trains? Or did this girl actually die? Turns out she actually died. And what happened was, the Ukrainian Secret Service was not planning on killing children. They're not Russians. <laughs> they actually had a bomb planted on the car of this person who is a close confidant of uh, Vladimir Putin. And what just happened was this girl just wanted to borrow the car that day and whatever happened. It was an accident, essentially. Now, it's not like you usually, to be clear, let me back this up. Most of the time, car bombs are not accidents. Even if they kill the person that it was not intended for, 
I don't know if accident's really the right word. I mean, what is this, Salt Lake City in the 90s? And there was a letter about a talking fish? I mean, we can't just go crazy. But when there's a war, when there's a country, Russia, putting people on trains, you're going to get creative, and Ukrainians are intelligent, and they had a plan, rather than just fight as stupid as their Russian counterparts, how about we strategically try and take out some people that are of more merit? that are of more points value, if you were to think of it as that way, if you need to. And sometimes, daughters just decide to do some dumb shit, and dads just give in, and next thing you know, a car bomb goes off. Woo, it was an accident. At least they're not Mormons. Could you imagine a Russian Mormon? Boy, would that be a situation NATO would need to get involved in. So... I say that to say the latest bit of news from the Ukrainian-Russian war is now that that happened and this girl unfortunately um, died not intended in the way anyone wanted, now Russia is planning or threatening on using their air force for the first time, which they haven't done yet, which is weird. Because if you remember, when this war started, it was supposed to be something that would happen in the blink of an eye, and here we are three months later and several zooms into Academy Award shows with Zelensky. Um, now, it, just because there's a nice story everyone could kind of point to, it seems like Russia's about to, you know, go nuclear with it in terms of like most nuclear plants are in war zones currently, and now they want to use their air force. Boy, does this feel like a Russian way for everything to go nuclear. Just not thinking ahead. So that was the last bit of real news. And I promised the last bit of real news on this show because let's bury our heads in the sand. Fetty Wap is facing five years in prison. That's a shame. I also think his accent is best described as a deaf Caribbean person. In some more interesting weird news, there was a woman from January 6th, the insurrection that the former president is currently facing charges for. Uh, There was a woman who stole Nancy Pelosi's laptop, if you remember. And this woman, (laughs) from Pennsylvania, baby, She stole her laptop. Clearly, this woman does not have any interest in living. If this was a a video podcast, I would say you should be paying for it. But if you could see a picture of this girl's face, I would say this is the type of girl that maybe, just maybe, should be institutionalized, 302'd for the rest of her life and never be allowed to see the light of day. I mean, this girl has murder in her eyes. This looks like one of Charlie Sheen's exes. This is not a good look. But the funny part... And the story that caught my eye is not that this girl is actually possessed by Satan. She was actually the girl who stole Nancy Pelosi's laptop and has currently been under house arrest. And she was recently granted a temporary suspension, a temporary reprieve from her house arrest to attend the Pennsylvania Renaissance Fair. Which is great. Good. Let her go. They should have let her stay there. They, you know, the, the crime, for her at least, if you can't kill this girl, and I'm just allegedly, that's, I don't even know if that word fits, but I know that was a lot. But I'm just saying, look at a picture of her. She really looks like she'll kill you first. If you can't lock her up, the best case scenario is you force her to work for a renaissance fair for the rest of her life. This girl does not have what it takes to work for a carnival. She is not carny material. What she is is a girl who could help distribute drumsticks at, you know, a a, a jousting event. And if you like Renaissance fairs, if you love Renaissance fairs enough to petition legally, get courts involved to a judge to say, hey, I know I'm currently one of the focal people involved in an open and ongoing uh, investigation into an insurrection against the country, but I love Renaissance fairs. Do you feel me? Do you get it? Do you know the rush of seeing two nights joust just for the hope of perhaps Ren fairing some princess. I don't know if I used that correctly, and I hope I didn't, because if I did, you're a nerd. Of course, of course the thing that is going to be maybe the the, the key powder keg when we get to look back at what caused the new Civil War, the insurrection that is, of course there's a girl bright front and center who's just stupid. This whole thing has such a fucking strain of uniquely activatingly stupid but at least she got to go to the renaissance fair which is positive in some other funny and interesting news actor ann hesh who unfortunately died in a car crash people on tiktok now are claiming that she knew too much dun 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 
Ann Hesch, she knew too much. That's why she was taken out in a single car crash. And I'm guilty, to be fair, of using the phrase single car crash far too flippantly. It might be gallows humor, but it's a lost art in my opinion. But I can assure you of this. Ann Hesch didn't know too much. I think we all know far too little. What would Ann Hesch even know? I didn't even know who Ann Hesch was. I had to have it explained to me, and then I had to look it up just to see if that was true. Because the actual explanation as to who she is is so not relevant to anyone. The fact that someone would think she potentially had information that required some type of journalist a la Clinton Foundation act remote activation of your car to make it crash into a tree is insane. And Hesh knew too much. What would she fucking know? Where Ellen DeGeneres is, hides the bodies? That's actually very possible. And that's actually very scandalous and interesting. And I recant my entire opinion about the Anne Hesh story. Allegedly, Ellen DeGeneres, I want no troubles. Moving on. <laughs> now that's funny. Moving on to the next story. There was another thing. That caught my eye because something I like to talk, well, I guess I can't really talk about it that much in podcasts because I sound like a a little silly fat girl believing in fantasy tales, but I like whenever there's this convergence of the metaphysical, the the mythical, and the science, and and there's like an explanation for these events that are almost mythical. You hear like scientists or archaeologists saying the Great Flood looks like it would have affected the Sphinx here or whatever the the, the fuck. Point is, I came across a news story that kind of uh, involved that type of convergence of ideas and it tickled my fancy so thus I share it with you because the world waits for nuclear war and we have buried our head in the sand now in Maryland in this country this beautiful country of ours that was founded in the 1300s by the Knights Templars there is a state known as Maryland which is a very weird probably government-owned state entirely but there's an island off the the coast of, of Maryland and it's real I've been there myself personally where there is Horses, just wild horses, just, hey, I'm a horse type of horse, wild ass horse, no saddle, just, they all live there, maybe like a hundred horses, they just live by a beach in Maryland, it's kind of crazy, it's a weird thing, I was there personally, you pull up and you're like, what's the big deal, these are just gonna be horses at the beach, and then you pull up and you see, whoa, these are just wild horses at a beach, it's real, that goes on in Maryland, but there was a story that was explaining how DNA scientists They did some investigation into some blah, blah, blah to prove how smart they were in their fancy lab coat to blah, blah, blah to basically say the conclusion was this. It is possible that the mystical origin of how these horses came to the island of Maryland is that long ago when the Spanish first arrived at Peru and the ship sank, some wrecked, but the horses swam to the coast and probably made it to Maryland and they've lived there ever since. Somehow... And this is weird to me. This whole article finally reached the conclusion that DNA evidence that these horses are, are the the DNA of the horses currently in Maryland match the DNA of native Spanish bred horses somehow conclusively proves, oh my goodness gracious, this mystical, mythical origin that we tell children in children's books about these fancy wild horses might actually be true. And to that I say, no shit. You stupid, dumb idiot. How is this groundbreaking at all? How is the explanation that we told to children that we made so mystical and mythical, how did that at some point become something that, how is that even folklore? The Spanish went to Peru. The Spanish got to Peru, and really, the Native Americans there, the Mayans or the Aztecs, whatever ones, I'm sorry, I got it wrong. Neither of them are around anymore or listening, so I doubt it. But... They literally said, hey, these dudes pulled up on horses and they were like making a point of notice like, hey, these horses are wild. We also know a lot of Spanish ships didn't get to land in Peru. We know a lot of them sank. We know a lot of them had gold coins and shit. Spanish boats sank. Now, if a Spanish boat was leaving Spain, headed to Peru, and it sank, odds are it might have sank somewhere off the coast of Maryland. If it had horses on the boat, horses can swim better than a person, they might have swam to Maryland. What is the fucking deal here? How, at some point, did this become groundbreaking, revelatory convergence of science and, and folklore to you? This is just logical, you dumb dumb. 
In the interest of people not being fooled by anything, not trying to seem like they were tricked or duped into biblical or mythical childlike thinking, you have become incapable of comprehending the most obvious shit. No shit, that's probably what happened. These horses have been chilling pondering why you give a fuck so much. Speaking of horses with dumbfounded expressions, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene is reportedly interested in somehow running for president or vice president. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with Marjorie Taylor Greene, first and foremost, I'm someone who really understands the power of names. And Marjorie is one of those names that is exclusively held by the craziest of women. So that's point one. Now, Marjorie Taylor Greene is essentially the first, uh, the poster child, the foremost expert of all things QAnon, and she is also an elected member of the federal government. So, ugh, not a good look. Um, if you believe in QAnon, if you, if you are anyone who still subscribes to QAnon, you're a dummy, you're an idiot, and you're a fool, and you're being played, and you deserve it at this point. Because, and I'll tell you here, I'll tell you, and it's up to, the, I know we said this wasn't a serious episode, but if you really want to know the deal with QAnon, I'll tell you. You really want to know the deal with QAnon? It had, like most things, a good intent, a good origin. It probably, and I'm just guessing, how do I know, but it probably had something to do with right around when Epstein happened, and someone probably legitimate in the government somewhere probably had tangible Epstein information. And probably, like all things that go to Reddit and are manipulated by people, this is far too dumb to handle the information. It was usurped or taken over, and eventually whoever was real left, and now it's just this thing that HBO produces and talks about. So, the quest is done. That's over. But Marjorie Taylor Greene is thinking, this is someone who believes in this thoroughly. Marjorie Taylor Greene, an elected politician for the United States of America currently, talking about, well, you know, maybe I'll throw my hat in. Maybe I should be president. May or at the very least, I should be vice president. Now, and I know this is not generally how you should go about picking or throwing your support behind in terms of elected officials, but in my humble opinion, not even looking at her beliefs, and I'm sure all of them are not correct, I don't think she is, 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 how do I say this? Marjorie Taylor Greene is, and again, not looking at her voting records on past bills, not taking into account any donations or where her campaign contributions come from, not looking into who she is as a person at all. In my humble opinion, Marjorie Taylor Greene is simply too ugly to be the first female president and too crazy to be the vice president. Both qualifications, I think, whether you want to admit it or not, very important. We don't want ugly people to be president. And sure, Trump is a bulbous orange cartoon caricature of a person that's sexually attracted to his own children. However, some people think he's attractive or at least represents something admirable. Who knows? And they should have their heads checked for something probably contagious. But if you're going to be the president of the America here, Ex, you know, excluding the, the last one, you gotta, you gotta kind of not look like you're repulsive. You gotta not want people to think you should get out of the room. Don't be in my field of vision. You make me sad. You look like a horse, let alone you get all of your opinions and deeply held beliefs from Reddit and 8chan. You look like a horse. You want to be the first female. You you want to be the first female vice president. You better be hot as shit. I'm sorry. These ain't the rules that I made up. They are just the rules. Tulsi Gabbard had great ideas, and you know what they did to her? The DNC was like, her hands are huge. She might be a man, and she's a Russian spy. So the standard of beauty. Unfortunately, there is a double standard. Live up to it. Don't look like a horse or get all your beliefs from H N. Another funny one-off story I came across involving her boyfriend and former president Donald Trump, and I know there's a bunch of other real stories we could talk about with him, but a funny one, just a funny flippant, ha ha ha, doesn't it make you forget there was an insurrection and an impending civil war? A funny flippant comment Trump made was reportedly, he told generals and other people, I want to have loyalty in the way Hitler had loyalty from his generals, from his closest allies. And do you know what a general then told Donald Trump? Uh, Sir, do you understand how many assassination attempts were made against Hitler by his closest generals, by his closest confidants? That is the level of uniquely and activatingly stupid 
that is posing an existential threat to democracy. That type of dumb. The guy in charge of the other dumb side of the Civil War probably, while he was in office, told everyone, I need you to be as loyal to me as Hitler's perceived closest friends who tried to assassinate him. That is what we're dealing with. Ration, logic, reason, out the window. We are dealing with almost something Russian-level dumb. But funny, I must admit, very funny. To be that unfamiliar with something, to say, I need loyalty in the way the guy that was, you know, had to thwart several assassination attempts on his life had loyalty. I need people so close to me that years from the event, years from our failed attempt to take over the world, Tom Cruise will make a movie about the assassination attempt my close friend, who was very loyal to me, made on my life. And may or may not have worked. We all made it to Argentina Chin Don. That's just a funny one. I need loyalty in the way people who try to kill me are loyal. Do you understand what I mean by that? Because I sure as fuck don't. Let's party and break and steal stuff. In some more funny, but probably this is done in poor taste if we are to be honest and about progress, Stanford, the university that is, you know, that C-nomes like DNA sequencing and shit like that, very important things, like makes clones, Stanford has hired a male period Dignity officer, a man who on campus is paid a six-figure salary to enforce and uphold the standards of all people who menstruate, which is not limited to people who menstruate. I would also like to add, and again, this is not a visual podcast, the picture of this guy looks like he also swims for Stanford, if you catch my drift, so keep your eye on that, because it sure seems like the guy that is on the Stanford swimmer team, who is now the period officer, doesn't seem like anything could go wrong out there. Doesn't seem like anything could go wrong out there. There are no genders. Why do you think you were raped? We're all just genderless amorphous frogs. But to even the podcast now, now to be a men's rights activist, because there is not enough people championing men's rights. Gary Busey has caught a sexual misconduct allegation. Cherry Hill Police from New Jersey, that is, for some reason, Gary Busey was in a motel off Route 70 in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Holy shit, is that sad? Because apparently he was appearing at some Monster Mania convention, and Gary Busey, to my knowledge, never played a monster in anything, despite maybe looking like one, maybe like, hey, kids, a motorcycle accident, man. I don't think, I mean, he was, he was Buddy Holly, you know what I mean? He had some great lines in Entourage. But if we're being honest with ourselves, that was charity, and the man doesn't have control of his fine motor skills because he didn't wear a helmet. Let that be a lesson. However, I have a hard time thinking Gary Busey was aggressive with anyone because I don't think, A, he physically is capable. And if you're in a motel off Route 70 in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, following a Comic-Con spinoff convention, I feel like there is some guilt on both parties, whoever were in that hotel room that fateful evening in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. I'm just saying, Gary, I, uh, let me paint you a hypothetical picture. Maybe some woman of the night, perhaps, or man of the night, who's to say, or perhaps a genderless menstruating amorphous frog of the night enters from a quid pro quo conversation previously had with Mr. Busey. And then suddenly maybe that person realizes, oh shit, this is Gary Busey. This is the guy that played Buddy Holly. I'm going to make a quick buck. That's possible. That's all I'm saying. Someone's got to defend Gary Busey because I don't think he knows where he is. He needs an advocate. I am a man of the people. And, and finally, uh, you, you better believe I've saved the best for last. The last great, amusing story that I found during the research and preparation for this episode, which I, I very specifically chose to bury my head in the sand and be unaware of the impending nuclear war that the Pope is currently praying doesn't happen. The last story that I think personally is the antidote to any fear, any existential dread you may feel, any of, if you are in the Ukraine and you're stuck there, and you're worried for your life, you're worried for your family. If you're in China, and you're worried that this, you know, soup that you got at the market might cause the next thing that closes the banks and the NBA. If you are Russian, who gives a fuck about you? If you are anyone on this globe who's just a little nervous and just needs something that really is just a good chicken noodle for the soul type of informational little tidbit for you, I have potentially the most amusing 
story, the most irrelevant, non-consequential, simply downright who cares bit of information for you. I think this bit of information might potentially prevent a nuclear war. The latest and greatest out of Hollywood is this. Taylor Lautner, famous for being the second lead and shirtless vampire on the Twilight film series, is getting married. And he's a shitty actor. He was carried in five Twilight films and hasn't been heard of since, but until today. He is getting married, and his fiance's name is Taylor. Now I'll give you a minute to do the math. Taylor Lautner, who gives a shit, is engaged to somebody named Taylor, and she's a woman who may or may not menstruate, according to the guy who looks like he swims for Stanford. If you get what I mean, Taylor Lautner's fiance's first name is Taylor. They will be married, and from that day henceforth, they will both be named Taylor Lautner, and everyone will still not give a shit. Is that not beautiful? Is that not great? Something that crazy and anomalous and just, oh boy, would you look at the coincidence of that? And nobody still gives a shit. Tell me what that action movie was Taylor Lautner was in that wasn't the Twilight movie, where he had a Pittsburgh Pirates jersey on for no reason other than I would assume tax cuts to shoot there, failed so miserably that we don't hear about him until he sporadically pops up in an Adam Sandler movie because that's where his career's at, or when he's about to marry someone and literally have the same name as them. I don't know who's the cuck in this situation, but I'll tell you this. While you're trying to get to the bottom of that, you ain't thinking about a nuclear war. (laughs) 